All right, everybody, we're going to take a look at races in this tutorial. Now, Fantasy Age has six core races. You know, as you can see here, I've got them all lined out for you in front of you. The Dwarf, the Elf, the Gnome, the Halfling, the Human, and the Orc. You know, your traditional types of races. And, you know, first off, I just want to say that, no, the, the Orc isn't evil. So, in Fantasy Age... All of the world, all of the races are basically in one setting. There's no evil races. There's no good races. They're basically all on an even playing field. Now, just like other D20 games you've played, if you played Savage Worlds, any other game you play, when you choose a race, you're going to get options for your character. Point blank. Everybody loves variety. Everybody loves to customize their character. And in Fantasy Age, it's no different. So each one of these races has a, uh, a little bit of lore, a little bit of history about each of them. We won't go over that. You guys can read that in the, in the core basic rule book. Uh, much like other games, it also talks about you know, female name examples, male names, clans, and then you know the good stuff. Like for the dwarf, you're going to get to add one to your constitution ability. You're going to get to choose one of the ability focuses between Constitution Drinking, Intelligence Evaluation. And if you don't know what an ability focus is, is basically it is a uh, sort of like a proficiency or a bonus that you would add on to a normal skill check. So, for instance, your Constitution, you would if you're doing any kind of drinking, you would do a Constitution check. But if you have the Drinking focus, then you would do the 3d6 plus your constitution. Now, seeing that you're basically focused in on a drinking skill, yes, there's a drinking skill or drinking focus in this game, then you would add an additional plus two. And you can also raise that focus up to a plus three, but that would be at a level 11 and plus, level 11 plus, and we're really not going to discuss raising stats in, in this tutorial or this workshop. So the next thing that you're going to get is a dark sight, which is basically going to allow you to see up to 20 yards in darkness without a light source. Now, 20 yards is a lot if you're thinking theater of mind. But if you're playing on a battle grid in front of you or on a virtual tabletop, then that would basically translate to 10 squares because in Fantasy Age, every square is equal to 2 yards. So your speed is going to be equal to 8 plus your dexterity. And then your, your speed will also adjust if you have any kind of armor penalties. So basically meaning this. If you, the, the heavier armor that you like to wear, and yes, mages can even wear heavy armor. There's no armor proficiencies in this game. Everybody is free to wear, wherever they, wear whatever they want. But if you're a mage, there are extreme penalties for wearing heavier armors. And we'll get into that uh, in an, at another time. So, 8 plus dexterity, minus any kind of armor penalty. That's what you're going to get for speed. All of the races have different speeds, and you'll see as we as we look over the other races. Now, you can speed, uh, speak and read Dwarven in common tongue. There are other ways to uh, enhance your player's intelligence with more languages through the uh, linguistics talent. Now, the, the very cool thing about Fantasy Age in choosing races is you get to roll twice, as you can see down here, on this Dwarf Benefits calendar. Now, you can, do, you can do multiple things, to be honest. First off, if your Dungeon Master, if he or she is going to make you roll on the table, you roll 2d6 twice, take the results, and that's what you get. I mean, there are you know several ability scores that you can increase, like Willpower, Fighting, or Strength. There are focuses, you know, intelligence, historical lore, constitution, stamina, strength, smithing, or intelligence engineering. All in line with what a dwarf would be in, you know, uh, any traditional game. Or maybe you could get another weapon group, axes. But if you've already got that axe, uh, you know, if you've already chosen that as one of your focuses, uh, well, one of your weapon groups, then you would be able to roll again with the asterisk. Or, if you don't want to roll, there's a point system that you can use. And the point system is going to involve not only the race, but the background. So we'll get into that uh, towards uh, in, in a little bit. 
But we'll take a we'll take a look at a couple more of these races. So, as you can see, it's not like you're get you, you are getting a a standard you know array of things that you're going to get every dwarf. But then you kind of get a little bit of a, a customization either by you know rolling RNG randomness whatever you want to call it or choosing you know with a point by system that that you can actually you could buy. Uh, I, well, in fact, we'll just go ahead and go over it now. So this optional buying race and background background benefits is basically this. If you're a person that loves to have total control of your character and you methodically plan every single little minor, minute, major detail out, then here's an option for you. And if your dungeon master he or she allows it, that's great. So this is where you're going to get four advancement points. Now when you get these four advancement points, you have to spend them in both the race and the background we'll talk about backgrounds in another workshop this is we're just talking about the races now I'm just telling you about the way that you can get these skills so you're gonna get four advancement points alright now two points is worth an ability score so willpower fighting or strength you can buy one of those it'll cost two of your four points alright now you can spend the other two points on focuses those are one point per, per you know per now if you do that you could you know here's an example you could spend two points on say you want fighting for your dwarf so you got two points left now you can buy a, a focus here and then you could buy a focus on you know the other table for backgrounds because for backgrounds you get to choose between two ability focuses so you have that option to buy a focus from from the dwarf chart or whatever background that you choose or if you do it randomly well if you do it randomly really this isn't going to count for you well your social class would be random because you could roll for that but you would have the choice of picking a focus from the dwarf and also from whatever you know background that that you're going to be so that's pretty much uh the optional purchase in a, in, a, in a nutshell now also maybe you'll get with your dungeon master and this is totally optional this is not even in the in the rules or nothing like that so take this with a grain of salt this is not you know any kind of official uh, canon for the game maybe you just want to uh, get with your uh, uh, your game master and say hey look can I choose one stat and can I can I choose one of these focuses? Maybe you can kind of work something out. That way you'll you know it's sort of like spending three points, and then you would choose whatever you wanted uh, from you know your background table. So there you know that way you're not getting anything more than what you normally would be by you know using the alternate rule anyway, which is really the same thing. It's just that you would go to your DM and say, hey, look, this is what I want to do. Can I do it? You know, no problem. All right, cool, no problem. So really, two to three ways is the same way, just one about differently. All right, so the elf, <clears throat> everybody knows, you know, elves are, you know, nice and pretty and, and all that good stuff. And, you know, same thing here, same format. Every race is in the same format. You know, uh, elves are going to get a dex bonus to their uh, dex ability. They're going to get to choose between natural lore intelligence, perception seeing, they're also going to get dark sight for 10 squares on a grid or 20 yards theater of mine. You can notice that the the speed on the elf is much higher, the base speed of the dwarf, four yards more. Uh, so you know you'll start with a 12 plus dex and then subtract any kind of armor penalty that you have. You get to speak, uh, read, you know, speak and read elven a common tongue, common tongue, and the same thing. You'll get to do several things. You'll get to roll on the benefits, or you can take the point by, or just be friendly with your GM and say, hey, look, this is what I want to do. They'll probably let you do it. Gnome, same thing, almost the same thing as the, uh, as the decks. They're a little bit more of a sneaky race, so their, their focuses are, are more on ledger domain, which is like uh, uh, pickpocketing or putting things in a certain place inconspicuously when nobody sees you doing it, or constitution stamina because they do have stout hearts. They're going to get dark sight also, 20 yards. Their speed is basically the equivalent of what the dwarves is, 8 uh, plus dex. They can speak no mission common, and they get a benefits table also. Halflings, same thing. You know, it's the same thing, guys. It's just really the whole, you know, the format for every race is the same. 
Halfling being a smaller race, they're going to get a you know dexterity ability bonus, communication, bargaining, dexterity, stealth, eight plus dex. You know they can speak halfling in common, and then they have a benefits table. Same thing with a human. The human does not have any kind of dark vision, so you're going to have to have like a magical light source or a torch source, which could you know kind of you know, along with the halfling, the halfling doesn't get any kind of any dark vision either. So, you guys will have to, you know, take that into consideration with lanterns, torches, maybe even glow sticks in in a Titan's Grave setting, or you know, flashlights, whatever takes uh, the battery charges. And then the the humans, they uh, speak the common tongue, and they also have a benefit table down here as well. Uh, and last but not least, the orc. You know, like I said, the orc is not a evil race, and it's not even a half-orc, and we'll talk about half-races in a second. Now, the, the orc is a, basically is one of everyone else, so they get strength, and they're more based on con and stamina. They do have dark sight in Fantasy Age. They start with a little bit higher speed, uh, like with the human, 10 plus dex. They speak orc and common. They have a table here also. Now, you're saying, oh, well, what about? I don't see a half elf, or I don't see a, I don't see a, a, a half orc, or you know, I, I don't see a dwarf or anything like that. Well, you know, no problem. You can actually play all kinds of, uh, you know, you can actually customize or mix your races if you would choose to. So, if you want to mix races, feel free to. And some campaigns will probably have some that are already pre-made uh, in the campaign settings, you know. But if you want to create one, you need to decide between the two races, you know, which heritage you want your, you know, your character to be dominant. So, if you want to play a dwarf, which is a half dwarf, well, a half dwarf, half orc, you can play a dwarf. If you want to play a half elf. What type of half elf do you want it to be? You want it to be elf and human? You know, do you want it to be elf and orc? There's no restrictions. There's literally no restrictions in Fantasy Age. You know, and when you do choose whatever half race you want to whatever you want to create, you're going to choose the dominant race. And in the case that I want to do it, we'll choose uh we'll choose the dwarf as the dominant race. So whenever you choose that, you're going to use the race's basic rules with one exception. Instead of rolling twice on the dominant benefits table, like every class gets in Fantasy Age, you're only going to roll once on that table, and then you're going to roll once on the other table. So let's take a look. Move back over here to uh, our races. Now, like I said, when I'm mixing races, and I want to make my dwarf have to work, you know, half dwarf, half orc. I'm going to choose the, you know, dwarf. I'll get all of these primary dwarf features unless I choose orc as being the primary heritage. Then I would choose, then I would, you know, have all of the, the orc stuff. But in my case, we're going to go, you know, dwarf is the primary heritage. And then instead of rolling, you know, twice on this table, I'll roll once from the dwarf table and then I'll roll once on the orc table. So they give you the freedom in Fantasy Age to make half races. So not only are there six core races, but there's a whole multitude of other possible combinations to have these unique races that you really want to have. So go for it. I mean, they, they, give, you the, they give you the tools, they give you the, the rules to do it. Now, get creative and you know make some pretty cool uh, races. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the races and everything it does. And, and uh, that little uh, orc or dwarf or human benefit table down below. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next time, I'm Dave. And I'll see you later.